What is going on, everyone? Hello, and welcome to Brain Gains, the show that is normally brought to you live from bodybuilding.com headquarters. My name is Tyler, and today we are talking about stress and about sleep. Uh, so as you know, throughout the entire month of May, we're going to be doing Brain Gains live from my office here at home for obvious reasons. Um, so if you guys want to check in on us, we're going to be here live every Thursday throughout the month of May. Come say hello. We're going to be trying to cover as many things as we can that are relevant to people who are uh, spending a little bit more time at home than they may be used to. Uh, don't forget, this is an open format show, so if you have questions or concerns or comments about what you're seeing live, make sure to put those into chat. Uh, if we don't get those, make sure you email them to us. We have an email for Brain Gains. It's at brain.gains at bodybuilding.com. Uh, there it is right there. There you go, Brain Gains. Make sure you send us an email. I monitor that every day, and I'm happy to answer questions about things that we talk about here. Uh, so yeah, like I said, we're talking about stress and we're talking about sleep today. Obviously, these are things that are very important. And I, there we go. We're going to like that. Here we go. Uh, we're, we're these are things that are very important to people who are spending a lot of time at home. These are stressful times, and so we wanted to talk about kind of what stress is, how you can help deal with it, and how you can help keep your body strong through what is a normally stressful time. So first of all, who am I? My name is Tyler McGlasson. I work in the regulatory compliance department at bodybuilding.com. Uh, I am a certified sport nutritionist through ISSN and then a master in kinesiology. So if you have questions about exercise or movement or nutrition or supplements, uh, I am your guy. And it is my job at bodybuilding.com to make sure that all of our products do as they say they do on their labels and in their copy online. So I do my best to stay on top of all the science that comes along with the products that we sell. So feel free to ask away when it comes to those sorts of things. But first, we're going to jump right in. We're talking about stress. So stress, what does it mean? So stress is kind of a, a very broad term for uh, uh, sympathetic action within the body. And when I say sympathetic, that doesn't mean, oh, I feel sorry for you. Sympathetic means it is a type of autonomic nervous activation. So your body has sympathetic and it has parasympathetic. So sympathetic activation is a reference mostly towards what is your flight or fight response. Uh, and this can be activated by fear or by aggravation or by anxiety or worry about the future or any number of things. Whenever you feel that tenseness in your body, uh, whether it be in the short term or over a long period of time, that is what stress means. Now, stress can also be physical. You can put your body under stress uh, by uh, doing intense workouts or, or working really hard over the course of the day. That is also a type of stress uh, that we see. So uh, first, let's talk about what it means to be stressed in the short term. So in short term, when you get stressed or if you become afraid of something uh, uh, or if something gets thrown at your face and you get that, that, that sense of fear, um, that is what's called uh, the, the short term adrenaline response. So I think everyone's heard of adrenaline or the more scientific name for it is epinephrine. And this is a, a, a hormone within your body or a neurotransmitter uh, that activates what's called the alpha-1 adrenergic response. So uh, adrenergic system is a, a system of uh, uh, receptors and responders within your body. They come in alpha 1s, alpha 2s, beta 1s, beta 2s, beta 3s. But uh, adrenaline is what's called an alpha 1 agonist. And what that means is it activates the alpha 1 receptors within your bloodstream. And those lead to things like vasoconstriction, increased blood pressure, and you feel the response of that all the way around your body. Now, your body metabolizes and gets rid of adrenaline fairly quickly. You've probably experienced this if you've been uh, fearful for something, but then you feel kind of that cool off uh, over the course of the next few minutes. It goes away very quickly. So that's why it's the short-term response. The long-term response is what we're a little bit more focused on today, uh, and that uh, has to do with a hormone called cortisol. Now, we hear cortisol talked about a lot when it comes to bodybuilding, and, and we're going to talk about why, but cortisol is a hormone that has a role within the body, but when you get too stressed, that role gets taken far beyond what it's supposed to. So cortisol is what's called a catabolic hormone. Now you've heard of catabolic and you've heard of anabolic. Catabolic means that you are breaking down your stores of energy to mobilize things like carbohydrates and fats to be used as energy. Now, I know sometimes it gets, it gets hard to remember the difference between catabolic and anabolic. A really uh, simple, easy, and kind of silly way to remember, this is the mnemonic that I've always used, is that catabolic is like a catastrophe and that it breaks everything down so that it can be used. So it's catastrophic breakdown of stuff. That's not necessarily catastrophic, but it helps remember cat and cat. And then anabolic, this one's kind of silly, but anabolic is, is when things are getting built up and you just think of an a one, an a two, an a three, an a four, and it's very easy. So 
Cortisol is catabolic and long-term increased levels of cortisol can lead to some bad things. Now, we're not necessarily talking about <clears throat> a, the, the disease that is associated with high levels of cortisol. That's Cushing's disease, and this is, this is not that. If you are struggling with Cushing's, then please go see a doctor. <clears throat> but we're talking about like generalized, slightly higher levels of cortisol due to lack of sleep or lower nutrition. But this is your body telling you that I don't have enough energy to do the things that I want to do. So I'm pulling it from everywhere that I possibly can. Cortisol tells your body to give you energy. Uh, and so it can do that through gluconeogenesis. It can do that through decreased insulin sensitivity. So you're telling your body to make carbohydrates, make glucose so that you can make ATP, but it'll make that glucose from maybe places that you don't want it to, whether it be your muscle tissue or uh, maybe, maybe it's pulling from stores that you don't want to necessarily be pulling from. And over the course of a long period of time, that high level of cortisol can have uh, negative effects like reducing bone formation. Bone formation is dependent on cortisol. And if you have high levels of cortisol, it'll revert backwards and you, you will actually generate less bone material if you have high levels of cortisol. You'll reduce muscle protein synthesis. Remember, uh, if you have amino acids and you also have high cortisol levels, your body will say, oh, I guess I need those amino acids for energy use, not for muscle building. And so muscle protein synthesis will go down. And then also another big one is we'll see decreased collagen uh, synthesis. Uh, if you don't know, collagen is actually one of the most common proteins within the body and is like one of the main building blocks of all your joints and your skin and all the connective tissue uh, throughout everywhere in your body. So it's super duper important. Uh, so cortisol, the, it, it goes through a what's called a diurnal cycle. So what that means is that when you wake up in the morning, it's actually very high. And then throughout the day, it, it kind of pitters its way down. That's why they say uh, in the afternoon around three or four o'clock, you see this really sharp dip in cortisol. And that's why a lot of people experience the need to take kind of like that afternoon nap is because since your cortisol is so low, you have very little mobilized energy. And so your body says like, I need to take a nap. So what can you do about it? Uh, we're going to get, we're going to be talking about that one, uh, one supplement that we have that was focused on cortisol very clearly is ashwagandha. Um, so ashwagandha is an Ayurvedic herb. That means it has a, a lot of use in, um, old Indian medicine. Uh, but clinicals that we have looked at uh, ashwagandha and cortisol levels very clearly uh, have, have shown that ashwagandha over the course of a period of weeks can actually support healthy cortisol levels, uh, not low, not high, but right where they should be. So if you feel like cortisol is an issue for you, ashwagandha might be a great place to start. So with that, before we go into sleep and relaxation, let's talk about a couple of the questions that we have here. Remember, uh, if you have a question that we don't get to today, uh, make sure you send me an email at brain.gains at bodybuilding.com. It's right there. Uh, and I'd be happy to answer those for you. But in the meantime, let's get to uh, a couple that we have right now. Uh, does it matter when I get my eight hours of sleep? So I've seen a couple of back and forths on this <clears throat> because, sorry, <clears throat> because the human circadian rhythm is very tapped into how light it is outside. And we'll actually talk about that in a little bit, but <clears throat> I'm sorry, I've got something in my throat. Uh, in theory, it should be, if you are able to make your resting place dark, it should not matter if you are sleeping during the day or at night, but <clears throat> getting those eight hours is more important than not getting those eight hours. I really apologize. My throat is being very stubborn right now. All right. <clears throat> If you plan to work out every day, is there an amount of hours you sleep that you recommend? Omar from YouTube, we're going to get to that. It is about eight hours, and we're going to talk about the why of that in just a moment. Uh, if I don't sleep, will I lose my gains? Uh, there is good data that shows that people who do not get enough sleep actually don't gain as, mus as much muscle as the people who do get enough sleep. And again, we're going to talk about that in just a moment. Uh, how important is recovery, is recovery, especially if you're in your 40s? So there's, there's actually an entire science to how you approach the periods between your exercise as well as your exercise. And that's because your muscle doesn't grow at all on the day you exercise. It grows in the time between your exercises and between your workout days. That recovery period is when your growth and strengthening takes place. Now, obviously, it is required that you work out hard and you work out well on your workout days. <clears throat> but if you are not exercising and taking good breaks, then that exercise will be for nothing. I shouldn't say for nothing, but it's just not as great. So, yes, recovery is super duper important. <clears throat> All right. I think I got it on that one. So hopefully my throat will last a little bit longer. How does caffeine affect your sleep? 
So caffeine, um, <clears throat> I'm so sorry, I'm coughing so much. Caffeine actually blocks what's called your adenosine receptors um, within, your, within your brain. And adenosine is one of those neurotransmitters that tells you that you're tired. And so if you are blocking those adenosine receptors, you're going to have a much more difficult time feeling sleepy and falling asleep. Uh, so yes, caffeine will absolutely negatively affect your sleep. It also increases your blood pressure uh, just a bit and can make you feel like you're in a much more heightened state of alertness. So uh, that'll make it so it's much more difficult to sleep for you. Uh, I can't sleep, but I'm sleepy. Please tell me tips to sound sleep. We will get there in just a moment. Uh, how much ashwagandha should I take? I believe that it's generally around 250 to 400 milligrams a day. Uh, and I think starting on the low end of that and then working your way up is going to be um, very beneficial. Looks like my dog actually just came in here. So Douglas is here to join us. All right. So let's move on to the next section. It looks like lots of people have really good questions about sleep. So remember, we talked about the sympathetic nervous system a little bit earlier. So now we're talking about the parasympathetic nervous system. So this is the other side. Uh, instead of the fight or flight response, this is the rest and digest response, which is just as important. Now, remember, I said that um, sympathetic leads to high levels of cortisol, which is catabolic. Now we're talking about a little bit higher levels of insulin and anabolic response. So this means uh, decreased heart rate, increased digestive movement, increased sensitivity to, to insulin, and many other important things that go along with the anabolic response, such as muscle protein synthesis and the storage of uh, energy substrates like glucose and such. So your sleep cycle. Uh, we've mentioned this a little bit earlier, but your, your sleep actually goes in stages uh, all the way one, two, three, and four, and then also a fifth stage called REM, R-E-M is, is short for rapid eye movement. And so when you first fall asleep and you're just kind of feeling the, the very light edges of sleep, you're in stage one, and then uh, all the way down into stage four, and, and stage four is so deep, you don't even know that you got there, but getting uh, a good 60 minutes of stage four a couple of times a night or, or three or four times a night is actually super important because that's where your real cognitive benefits come from. Uh, there was a super interesting study done on mice where they tracked their brain activity throughout the course of a day, and then they tracked their brain activity while they slept. And they found that when rats got into stage four of sleep, you could track portions of their brain activity that were the exact opposite of what they were during the day. And so it was as if their brains were winding back everything that they had done throughout the day and reinforced those pathways. Now that's super important for people who are exercising because so much of what we do in the gym is benefited by strong neural pathways, whether it's by recruiting different neural groups within your muscles or getting that muscle memory to do exercises in the most efficient way so that you can increase your intensity. Uh, having strong neural pathways reinforced by great stage four sleep is, is absolutely imperative. And remember, we don't, we're not always in stage four. Generally how it works is you start in stage one and then you slowly drop down into stage four and you stay there for a while. But then after about 60 minutes or so, you kind of come back up and then you go back down and sleep is like a wave. Now, REM, I mentioned before, uh, rapid eye movement is when you are actually not in stage four, you're much closer to stage one and two, but that's where you dream. So if you've, if you've ever had a dream before, you know what rapid eye movement is, uh, but it, it can be, if you can actually tell if someone is in, is in REM sleep because you can see their eyes kind of wiggling under their eyelids. Uh, but anyway, uh, let's see, what do we have next? Oh, also sleep allows for increased blood flow to muscles for repair and growth. Um, so if you've ever slept under a nice warm blanket and your, your feet were cold when you went to bed, but then you woke up and your feet were nice and cozy, that's because you've gone into such a relaxed state that your blood flow has started to increase everywhere throughout your body. And that increased blood flow is super duper important to making sure that your muscles that, are, that need recovery are getting the nutrition that they need in order to build. They're getting the uh, uh, carbohydrates so they can start storing up uh, uh, energy stores for later. Uh, blood flow is, is just super important to getting that recovery that you need and blood flow happens very efficiently while you are in the deepest levels of sleep. Uh, okay, so someone asked, what can I do to help improve my sleep? So uh, I looked up uh, a couple of different tips and I wanted to kind of go through some of them that I felt were most important. Uh, one of them is making sure that you are trying to go to sleep around the same time every night. And I know this is a big ask for a lot of people, but setting a bedtime as an adult is super weird and also very important because your body loves being on a schedule. And so, you know, saying to yourself, I'm going to go to sleep at 
1030 every night and then making sure that as you get closer to 1030, you kind of stop doing the things that require a lot of, of attention. Uh, you kind of turn down the lights. Maybe you start reading a book. Um, you just kind of start winding down as you get closer to 1030 so that when you get to that bedtime that you will be hitting, you know, as often as possible, your body is used to falling asleep at that time. Uh, number two, and this is uh, something I saw a little bit earlier, blue light. So this is a, this is blue light is a topic that's been kind of coming into uh, the ether of, of, of sleep here in the last five or 10 years or so. And that's because people are spending a lot more time uh, in front of a screen, whether it's your phone or your computer. I know I'm in front of my computer all the time because of work. You're exposed to a lot of blue light. Now, blue light isn't inherently dangerous. Uh, it's just slightly higher frequency, but it is still within uh, the visible spectrum. But it is, it is light that is, like I said, higher frequency, slightly higher energy. But what it does is it tells your brain that you are still outside during the day. You are up and about, and it is light outside. Thus, you should be awake um, it actually slightly inhibits melatonin um, secretion within your body. So you're going to have a little bit hard time kind of winding down if you're constantly telling your body, look how bright it is outside with this bright screen that's right in front of my face. Now, if you're like me, uh, you struggle quite a bit with, I'm going to get into bed and I'm going to look at my phone for 20, 30, 60 minutes and just sit there because that's just kind of how it works sometimes. Uh, but if you can eliminate that, if you can set your phone down, if you can reduce the blue light that you're exposed to, especially towards the end of the day, you're going to see big, big benefits. Uh, another thing that you can do if you're in front of a screen all the time, uh, we've seen a lot more uh, brands coming out with what are called blue light glasses. So these are glasses that you can wear that have kind of a uh, yellowish or amber shading to them. And what they do is they block a lot of that blue light so that your eyes don't get exposed to quite as much of it throughout the day. Now, I've seen kind of varying reports. Do people like them? Do people not like them? I wear them sometimes, and I've found success with them, especially on days where I feel like I'm getting a headache from all the screens that I'm looking at. It's a great way to give my eyes and my head a little bit of a rest. So uh, you can check that out as well. Uh, supplements you can try out if you feel like um, those aren't working for you. Melatonin is obviously a super important one when it comes to sleep. The big caveat to melatonin is a lot of people think like i'm going to take this melatonin and it is going to put me to sleep um, melatonin is not a sleeping pill it's not ambient it's not a drug it's it is a hormone that your body uses to help regulate your circadian rhythm and so what that means is if you're going to set yourself a bedtime every night at 10 30 like we talked about before regularly taking something like melatonin at six seven eight o'clock making it a part of that schedule will help you fall into that bedtime routine uh, and it'll help you sleep more consistently over a long period of time. Like I said, it is not a sleeping pill. It's not something where you're sitting in bed and staring at the ceiling and you're like, gosh, I should really take a melatonin to help put me to sleep. Like that's, that's not how it works. So check it out. Uh, the dosage range is anywhere from one to five milligrams. Uh, so start low and then work your way up. Uh, I don't see a lot of people taking more than five or seven milligrams. So if you feel like you're really at the top end of that and you're still having tons of trouble sleeping and you're following all these steps, then maybe it's time to go see someone who really knows what they're talking about when it comes to sleep. Uh, number two is GABA. Uh, and GABA, G-A-B-A, -A, is short for gamma amino butyric acid. Uh, which is another neurotransmitter within your body that is an inhibitory neurotransmitter. This one doesn't have quite as strong uh, clinical data when it comes to consumption of this ingredient leading to better sleep, but GABA levels are important when it comes to keeping you from getting too alert and too excited. Uh, and so if GABA is another thing you want to try, it is worth checking out. Uh, we had a question, how do you feel about using melatonin? I feel good. Start low, work your way up, see how it feels. Uh, we had a Facebook question. How does Douglas handle stress? My dog actually handles stress very poorly. He is a very, very high stress, very high cortisol dog. Uh, and that is a constant struggle, but Douglas is for another day. I wish I could get him up here, but he's sleeping right now. I don't want to, I don't want to disturb him. Are there natural things you can have in your diet to help with sleep? Uh, Let's see. If you are consistent, uh, are there natural things to help with sleep? Okay, Alice from Facebook. Uh, the biggest thing I would say is make sure you're staying away from really high sugary foods late at night. Um, you don't want to give yourself this big burst of chemical energy right before you go to bed. And this can really be broken down to like, make sure you don't eat a lot of food after seven or eight o'clock. Um, I struggled with this for a long time. You eat dinner, you're full, you go to often do something else. And then all of a sudden it's 10 o'clock and you're like, golly, I really wish I had some ice cream right now. And then you have a bowl of ice cream and you're like wide awake. Um, so make sure 
Uh, you stay away from high sugar foods. Um, a lot of people report having a, a high protein meal kind of late at night is a little bit more helpful because it's not like something that is going to get you wired, but it will kind of sit in your stomach. You know, we sell a lot of casein products that people like to take right before they go to bed to keep their amino acid levels high as they sleep. So if you want to try that, that is good as well. If you're consistent with your diet and exercise, can stress and not enough sleep prevent you from losing weight? Uh, absolutely, it can. Um, stress can really mess you up. And I, I would say that if you, uh, if you're stressed and you are not sleeping, you are really not getting the full benefit of the exercise that you're doing. Remember, we talked about a little bit earlier that a lot of the gains that you get, most of the gains that you get from exercising happen when you're not exercising. They happen when you're sleeping, they happen on your off days and your active recovery days. And so if you're not taking full advantage of those, then you're not getting every bang for your buck and you are wasting time at the gym. It's not being as productive as it could be. I shouldn't say wasting, but it's not as productive as it could be. Does sleeping late affect making gains? Uh, not necessarily. It affects your ability to make gains in the morning, um, but it. Uh, I think it's more just about, you know, making sure you have time to get the sleep that you need uh, and exercise and eat healthy. But if that means that your clock is slightly rotated such that you're waking up at noon and then working out at three o'clock and then staying up until two, then that's your prerogative. I believe that as long as you're getting your sleep, you're already doing yourself a great service. Uh, is stress connected to the digestive system? So yes, um, if you are stressed, remember we talked about a little bit earlier that stress can lead to increased levels of adrenaline. Uh, and adrenaline is absolutely a alpha-1 adrenergic uh, agonist. And that means that you are activating your sympathetic nervous system. Uh, remember we talked about sympathetic is the fight or flight response. And the opposite of that, the parasympathetic is the rest and digest. So when you are stressed and when you are, we'll, we'll call it activated, generally your digestion and your excretion and, and all the things that go along with that are halted. You don't do a lot of digesting when you are running for your life. I know that's the kind of like the big uh, far end of the spectrum example, but uh, if you want to know kind of what happens when you are stressed, take it out to the furthest end of the spectrum. You know, if you are, if you are really scared and running and, 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 you know, really activated, then you're probably, your body's probably not worried about digesting what's in your stomach or moving stuff through your digestive system. So yeah, absolutely it will. Um, is there a link between testosterone and sleep? Uh, there probably is. I haven't studied it too much, uh, and I probably need to do a little bit more digging there. Uh, but to my knowledge, I'm not sure. I, and I believe that if you have a healthy level of testosterone and are getting a healthy level of sleep, then you are, are doing great. But I don't think that getting more testosterone puts you to sleep. Uh, but if you have more information about testosterone and sleep, please feel free to reach out to me. We're going to flash this again, brain.gains at bodybuilding.com. I would love to hear more about that. That would be super duper. Okay. Uh, one more question and then we're going to call it for today. Um, uh, let's see. Will nighttime protein shake interrupt a deep sleep? To my knowledge, no, it will not. If you are just having a casein shake at the end of the day, I don't believe there's anything that goes on with your digestive system that will pull you out of the deep sleep. Uh, stage four sleep, the only thing that I know like for certain that really interrupts it are chemical imbalances within your brain and also uh, sleep apnea. Uh, and apnea is a condition that some people struggle with where when they get into the really deep parts of sleep, their tongue actually slips back into their throat uh, and, and it doesn't choke you, but it makes it so that you don't breathe optimally for a moment. And that moment is enough to arouse you from level four up to like level one or two. So you don't wake up but you don't get that level four. So as soon as you drop down low, it shoots you right back up. And so you don't spend any time in level four. But again, that's a, that's a genetic issue that some people struggle with and uh, is absolutely something that you would talk to a sleep doctor about because the only treatment that I know of for apnea is wearing the CPAP mask, um, which is the constant positive pressure uh, that needs to be applied so that your tongue can't fall back. So anyway, that's all we got for questions today, guys. If I didn't get to you, um, I apologize. And if you want to shoot me an email, brain.gains at bodybuilding.com, I would love to hear more from you because this is a really important topic that people obviously have really good questions about. So let's talk more. Uh, we did reach out to our friends on YouTube. Uh, if you don't follow our YouTube channel, make sure you go to bodybuilding.com on YouTube. Uh, we posted a community post to hear from you guys what it is that you do to help uh, keep the stress away during these troubling times. And these are some of the answers that we got. So thank you to everyone who responded. If you want to respond to more community posts like this, make sure you go on YouTube there. 
Uh, so uh, early rising in the mornings, a proper sleep routine, a healthy and balanced breakfast is the most important meal of the day. Plenty of stretching and HIIT workouts. There you go, HIIT, high intensity uh, interval training. Uh, I've been doing that actually, and it's been a lot of fun. Uh, the great part about exercising is that it also makes you super tired. Uh, a lot of people don't put those two together for some reason, but exercising regularly is a great way to get your body tired enough to put your mind at rest during uh, the times where you want to sleep. Uh, taking your dog out for a walk, exercise, trying new recipes and catching up on shows. Trying new recipes is actually really fun. My wife and I have been doing that a lot here at home. Uh, and is a great way to uh, kind of keep your mind engaged and not worried about some of the other stuff that you may have on your mind. Uh, stay positive, relax, exercise, listen to music, maybe try gardening and reach out over the internet if you need to. Pray and hope for this to all end soon. Uh, gardening is another one that's a lot of fun because it's actually significantly more physical than you might expect. Uh, I spent all of last weekend putting these like liners around my flower bed and my legs were wrecked for like three days. Uh, I'm coping by getting ready for Monday since that's when the gym opens. Thank you, YouTube, for some great responses there. Before we go, we have a couple of products we wanted to talk about today that are very specific to the topic today. Uh, number one is uh, the RSP Z Elite with zinc, magnesium, vitamin D, B6, and melatonin. So remember, we talked about melatonin a little bit earlier, and this is another great way to get some of those minerals like zinc and magnesium that are a little bit more difficult to get your hands on. Uh, so if you're sweating a lot, if you're working out a lot, this is a great way to replenish those. Uh, number two is Alpha Dreams from Alpha Lion. So this one has uh, tryptophan, which is that amino acid from Turkey that everyone always talks about all the time that puts you to sleep. Uh, it has ZMA, it has GABA, like we spoke about earlier, melatonin and ashwagandha. Uh, again, we covered all those today. So if you want to try all those in one, uh, Alpha Dreams, it comes in Honey Badger and Tropical Terminator. So if you want to try Honey Badger or Tropical Terminator, Alpha Dreams. Uh, number three is Alpha Max Lights Out. So this is uh, a little bit more of a botanical take on how to approach sleep. So if you guys have heard of valerian root or chamomile, lavender, these are all different types of botanicals that are associated with better sleep. I know you've probably heard of chamomile tea or lavender tea, and those are great ways to kind of wind down at the end of the day. So if you want to go with the more natural take on, on approaching sleep, uh, Lights Out from Almax would probably be a great way to do that. Uh, we have the Primeval EAA Sleep. So again, melatonin, GABA, this also, one also has theanine in it, which is another calming amino acid, but it also has a bunch of essential amino acids. And we've talked about these on brain gains. We'll probably talk about them next week as well, but these are the amino acids that your body cannot get from anywhere except your diet. And they're super important to building muscle and staying healthy. And this one's got them all six grams of them. It comes in strawberry, mango, tropical lemonade. Make sure you check it out. And then finally, we talked about ashwagandha a little bit earlier. If you just want that, and if you want a single ingredient and a really easy way to take it, now is the way to do it. Uh, and that is available on BBCom as well. Uh, we also have a 25% off on all of our signature and dimatized products right now. And so if you want any of those, make sure you check it out. And then finally, one thing I wanted to cover today is if you are looking for a body fit program that is a little bit more focused on this sort of um, holistic you know, avoiding stress, helping with your overall wellness. We have one just for you. It's called Mind Body Fit. I wish I had a little thing to put over, but I don't. Uh, but the little spiel I've been given here is, if you are looking for a better you from inside out, Mind Body Fit, your 90-day wellness journey is it. In bodybuilding.com's first holistic approach to fitness, you'll get the best of three worlds, workouts, yoga, and meditation. This is a great program to start if you've never tried yoga or meditation before. Plus, it can be done in the gym or at home. That's right, easily. There's guided meditation videos, quick and easy yoga routines, and a whole food recipe that you can access anytime throughout the 90-day program. Now, there's like four to five programs or four to five workouts a week that you can do. All of the exercises are based on periods of time, so like doing an exercise for 45 seconds or 30 seconds or 60 seconds uh, instead of reps. So it is very much based on how much you are able to do in that time. So it's a little bit more programmable for people who may be less experienced or more experienced or what have you. So uh, make sure you check that out. Next week, like I mentioned, we're diving a bit deeper into macros. So proteins, carbs, fats, uh, what do those mean? How do you approach them? And what you should be thinking about when you're making those midday snacks or when you're at the grocery store. Uh, if you guys have ideas that are cool and fun about how to make fun snacks out of that are great macros, make sure you send us those at brain.gains at bodybuilding.com. We'll probably make another YouTube post about those if you want us to check out there. But for now, that's all I've got for you. Thank you everyone for joining in. Uh, with us today. We're going to be back next Thursday, same time, 10 a.m. Mountain Standard Time, uh, and hopefully we will see you there. Thank you, and I hope you guys all have a great, safe weekend. We'll see you next week. Bye. Welcome to Mind Body Fit, your 90-day journey to complete wellness. 
We created this program to help women achieve all over wellness. You can tap into the collective wisdom of exercise science PhDs, expert yogis, meditation gurus, personal trainers, makeup artists, even professional counselors. Whichever way you decide to hang out with us, you'll find unique pieces <laughs> that will help you feel your best every single day. Now go get your glow on.